Welcome back to Lab Rat Scientific. In today's episode, I want to talk about the stability of fin stabilized rockets. But before I begin, let's take a look at a fin stabilized rocket used by NASA. That was a NASA sounding rocket. It uses fins to make sure the rocket flies in the proper direction. It has no guidance system like the more expensive rockets like the Falcon Heavy. Now this is also a fin stabilized rocket. You might think of it as a model rocket. Now you probably can't afford a million dollar sounding rocket, but I suspect you can afford a few model rockets to do some experiments with. So let's talk about what I mean by a stable rocket. Now this is the airflow represented by these arrows and it indicates that the airflow is moving across the board. Now a stable rocket will always want to keep its nose pointed into the airflow. It might oscillate up and down a little bit, but it always flies in the proper direction. Now an unstable rocket will have a tendency to want to fly sideways or even fly backwards, which is disastrous for rocket flight. Now let's talk about some of the basic components of a rocket. First of all, we have the fins, we then have a cylindrical body tube, and a nose cone. Before we get into the details, we want to strip this rocket down to its basic parts. Now let's start off with just the cylinder. So let's do an experiment to see how this cylinder moves through the air by itself. Here's my test article to show neutral stability of a cylindrical body tube. We've got a PVC pipe with a string hanging at the center of gravity. So if I swing this, we can see what the aerodynamic characteristics of a cylindrical body are. What you should have noticed from that test was the body tube was flipping around and cartwheeling. What it was trying to do in general, however, was trying to align itself perpendicular to the airflow. Here's the airflow moving this way, and it wanted to align sideways to the airflow. Not good for rocket flight. So what do we do to a cylinder to try to make it more stable? Well, the first step is to add some fins. We place those fins as far as possible on the back of the rocket. So what happens is the airflow creates a force on the back end of the rocket pitching it around so the nose tends to point into the airflow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the rocket's pitching up and down during flight. What's going on there is as the rocket pitches up, the fins get an angle of attack. Here's the airflow, here's the fin. It creates an angle of attack, which produces a lifting force, which brings the rocket back towards the airflow. Now, the rocket will tend to overshoot. When that happens, we get a negative angle of attack. And that creates a lifting force downward, again, correcting the rocket. So it's oscillating back and forth, trying to get its nose pointed into the airflow. So we have fin lift. Now, that's not a very efficient configuration for this rocket. We don't want a blunt end on our rocket. So the next thing we do is place a nose cone to make the rocket more aerodynamic. Now, the problem with that, however, is that that nose also produces lift. It's a curved surface in the airflow, and it creates a lifting force. And as the rocket attempts to pitch up because of that force, it actually becomes less stable and wants to go all the way around. So the trick is to make sure that my fin lifting force is greater than the nose lifting force, and thus will have a stable flight. Now, there are two things that come into play for stability. It's the center of pressure, which is based on the aerodynamic forces, and center of gravity. Now we can think of the center pressure as a balancing point between the nose and tail lift. And that tells us we can centralize that force in one position on the rocket, somewhere along the body tube. Now the other factor we have to consider is the center of gravity of the rocket. The center of gravity is simply the balancing point. And I can show that on this model here, hanging from a string, it balances out, so that is the center of gravity. Now we'll let the center of gravity be represented by the pivot point here on my model on the board. Now that's actually quite accurate because the actual rocket will pivot around the center of gravity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the fin lift and the nose lift will create a center of pressure location, and that's located somewhere on the body, and I'm going to assume it's going to be right there for now. Now, for stability, we need to make sure that the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity. 
And so we can identify that as stability. is equal to the center of pressure measured from the nose minus the center of gravity from the nose. And that difference is how much stability my rocket has. And we identify that as the static margin. Now ideally, we want at least one body diameter, one body diameter between the center of gravity and center of pressure, and that will create a stable rocket configuration. So let's try to do some demonstrations to see if we can find out where the center of pressure is on a model rocket. Okay, so let's take a look at the shadow method for approximating the location of the center of pressure on a model rocket. I've got my test article here, and I placed it onto a sheet of corrugated cardboard, and then traced around the outside of the model, essentially identifying the shadow of my test article, and then cut out the cardboard to create my shadow model. Now to determine the location of the center pressure, I want to balance the model. And that balancing point is identified as the location of the center of lateral area of this model, which is also approximating the center of pressure location. So now what I can do is take my test article and run some tests to see how accurate this position is. Here's my test article I'll be using for my swing tests. It's made out of model rocket parts, including a plastic nose cone, a paper tube, and uh, balsa wood fins. I've also built a movable collar that I can adjust the uh, pivot point during my swing tests to wherever is necessary to conduct the experiment I'm doing. I've also got a weight system I can place in the back end to help adjust the center of gravity of the model. I can also place weights up front to move the CG forward if necessary. So now what I want to do is transfer the center of pressure location from the shadow model onto my actual test article. So I'll do that very simply by placing my shadow model next to the model rocket and transfer the center of pressure location onto the model. Next what I want to do is put weights in the front and the back of the rocket to be able to get my collar to be right on top of the center of pressure location. Now, if this is actually the center of pressure location, the rocket will fly sideways or act unstable when I do a spin test. If the center of pressure is actually behind that, this test article should fly stable as I do my spin test. In this next step, I need to move the center of gravity of my model to be directly on top of the shadow model center of pressure. To do that, I'm using my trusted pennies, and I found out through trial and error that a stack of five pennies mounted in the back end of the rocket will allow me to shift the center of gravity to the desired position. Now if you look in the back, you can see where I've taped them in there. Nothing sophisticated. And now you'll see that I have a balanced model to where the center of gravity is co-located with the center of pressure. So now what I can do is go outside and do my swing test to see if this configuration is stable. So what did that swing test tell me? Since the rocket flew stable, that tells me that the center of pressure must be somewhere behind the center of gravity location where my pivot point is with my string. So the shadow model is giving me a center of pressure here. Other methods will tell me it's somewhere else. But what this does tell me though, is that the shadow method is a very conservative estimate. As long as I have my center of gravity up here, forward of my center of pressure, the rocket will be stable. If the shadow method says my center pressure is at this location, but in reality it's further back here, I can't lose if I put my center gravity in front of that balancing point or the shadow method CP location. So again, the shadow method produces a very conservative location for center of pressure approximation. The location of the center pressure can be calculated theoretically, but you need to know aerodynamic properties of the nose cone and the fins, so it can be kind of cumbersome to do. However, luckily these days, there's software that can do that for you. The software I like to use is called OpenRocket. It can be downloaded free from the internet. Let's go ahead and do some experiments to see how well the OpenRocket software calculates the center of pressure location. This is the center of pressure location calculated by the OpenRocket software. And this is the center of pressure location determined by the shadow method. 
you'll see there's a pretty big discrepancy between these two points, up to about two inches. So what I want to do now is to transfer the center pressure location from open rocket to my model rocket, and then ballast the rocket so I can move my collar to that center pressure point and do another spin test to see what happens. This is the rebalance configuration to test out the center pressure location generated by the open rocket software. Let's go ahead and go outside and give it a spin test. Okay, in that spin test, we saw that the rocket was flying backwards. That indicates either that the rocket was neutrally stable, meaning the center of gravity was right on top of the center of pressure, or actually unstable, which meant the center of gravity was behind the center of pressure. Now what I want to do is to move the uh, center of gravity forward a little bit to see if I can get the rocket to be stable again, and that will tell me roughly where my actual center of pressure is. Here's the final balance configuration. I've moved the center of gravity about one half inch forward. So let's go outside and see what the spin test tells us. Okay. In that spin test, I could get this rocket configuration to be stable, flying nose first. The previous test always wanted to fly fins first, indicating it was unstable. So what that tells me is my center pressure is actually between these two points, pretty close to where the open rocket simulation says it should be. In conclusion, it looks like the shadow method didn't do a very good job at predicting the location of the center pressure. However, open rocket seems to have done a real good job, which gives me confidence to use that software on future rocket designs. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about rocket stability, and I hope to see you next time on LabRat Scientific.